I'm Dr. Kapoor and I graduated in medicine in 1977 and after that I qualified in internal medicine in 1981 and then in cardiology, DM cardiology from PGI, PGI Chandigarh in 1985. Then I went to US and I specialized in the field of echocardiography for a period of two years. I came back in 1988 and joined Sir Gangaram Hospital and I started the non-invasive cardiac lab there. I continued in Gangaram Hospital for a period of about uh, seven years. Then Apollo started in Delhi in December 95. So I joined in the Pastapolo Hospital and since then I have been continuing in this hospital. I started with the non-invasive cardiac lab in this hospital when it started and we started uh, in the first month I remember we just did about 20 cases and then gradually built up and by uh, another 5-6 months we are started doing 500 cases a month. And now we are approximately doing 3,000 to 3,200 cases a month. And uh, my area of expertise in the field of echocardiography was initially with the stress echo, which I introduced in Gagaram Hospital in 1989 and followed it up with dobutamine stress echo in 1990. And after that, we have built on that in Apollo Hospital and we are doing about 20 to 25 cases of stress echocardiography per day. So which is perhaps the largest that is being done anywhere. So uh, my other areas of expertise have been 3D echo and speckle tracking echocardiography. I also started the course in non-invasive cardiology which I have been doing for the last uh, 15 to 20 years. and. Uh, this course basically trains uh, doctors, young doctors in the field of cardiology and they are from either internal medicines or they are from cardiology background or internal medicine background and they work with me for a period varying from one month to three months. And then the, quite a few of them, they make echocardiography as their career. The number of uh, doctors in Delhi in some of the major hospitals and some of the smaller hospitals who are heading the non-invasive cardiac lab and have been trained by me. Actually, stress echocardiography was started uh, somewhere in the early 1980s. But, you know, the echocardiography itself started around about the early to mid-1970s while stress echocardiography started in the early 1980s and what was there in stress echocardiography is we look at the motion of the heart, we say the contractility of the heart in the resting condition and under stress conditions. Now as the echocardiography evolved from M mode echo that was just a thin slice one dimensional to a two dimensional echocardiography and then became three-dimensional echocardiography that we are practicing today. So the stress echocardiography has accordingly evolved during this period of time. So the main purpose of stress echocardiography is to look at the contractility of the heart under stress conditions. Because under the resting conditions, the heart requires very little blood supply. So that even though there may be more than 90% blockage of all the three major coronary arteries. Still, the contractility of the heart may be normal in the resting condition. So then we will not come to know whether there is a blockage of the coronary arteries or not. But when you give stress, we increase the requirement of blood flow five to six times. And if there is a significant blockage, then we are not able to get that increased contractility. And we divide the heart, that is basically the main pumping chamber of the heart in the left ventricle. So we divide that into a number of segments, number of wall segments. And according to the coronary artery distribution, these segments are named. And therefore we can find out which segments are involved, which are not contracting well under exercise. 
and which cornea arteries are likely to be weak. We can calculate the overall contractility of the heart, which is say ejection fraction, before the exercise and after the exercise. And if there is a blockage of the coronary arteries, of the major coronary arteries, then the ejection fraction could drop after exercise. Say if the normal ejection fraction we say is more than 55% and it may drop to 40% or so after exercise if there is an obstruction of the major coronary arteries. The stress that we give is uh, usually a treadmill test. In the past we used to give the bicycle stress also but now all over the world we are giving the treadmill test. The main thing is that we do the treadmill exercise during which time the patient is being monitored with ECG and his blood pressure is also being monitored and when the patient achieves a certain level of exercise which we consider adequate for that patient's age and if he can exercise no more after that then we immediately stop the exercise and perform the echocardiogram within the first 30 seconds we can later on analyze that picture into various regions and can get see what is happening to the heart under stress conditions. We also look for any leakage of the valves that are in stress, uh, that is after stress, if there is a leakage of the mitral valve for example, then that also is looked at. We also look for certain relaxation functions of the heart under stress conditions and by that we get almost a complete evaluation of the heart. So if you have to have one particular test which can non-invasively test tell us whether there is a major coronary artery blockage or not and which also gives the functional capacity of the patient then that test is stress echocardiography. It requires a lot of experience and expertise you require some level of training to do ordinary echocardiogram and you, and you further need a higher level of training to do stress echocardiogram. The only problem with this test is that it is operator dependent. The quality of the pictures that are acquired and the way they are interpreted depends upon the expertise and experience of the operator. So that is the only drawback of this test. Uh, so, so to some extent, the, even though we do get some objective parameters, but even to get the objective parameters, we need good quality studies and for that the operator expertise is a must.